Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like in the trades. Well, today is a requested video. The request came as, how do I, if I'm not relacquering an instrument and the lacquer is partially there, the solder joint is broken. How do I make it all look like it's supposed to look? I had a good customer bring in his, uh, it's either late fifties or early sixties olds trombone. So that was our project when it had a single broken solder joint and I decided to make the video. It runs nonstop. So it's got shaky hand of Miss K trying to keep up with everything that I'm doing. There are no cuts, there are no edits. It's exactly what the request was for. And it's my entire process of how I do a single solder joint. Fit, clean, control the heat. That's what I do. And then I show some touch up things and how I blend it all together to get rid of any kind of oxidation or anything like that. So I hope you enjoy this week's video. It was a really cool horn to work on. The Smith Little Torch is the torch setup that I use, and it's just unbelievable. So there you go. Uh, we're just gonna let it jump right on in, and I'll see you next time. Enjoy the video. All right, welcome back to the shop, everybody. Today we've got this really cool old trombone. Uh, this was made in Fullerton, California in the late 50s or early 60s. It has come into our shop because the solder joint holding the gooseneck is broken. So we're gonna get this cleaned up and then we'll get it re-soldered. So we're gonna start with putting it on a mandrel. We don't wanna take this old gooseneck off for just a playing condition repair, but we do have to clean up some of this old solder. So we're gonna take some sandpaper and do the underside of the flange of this brace. And that's gonna clean off some of the old oxidation. And you can hear as my sandpaper starts kind of breaking down to where it gets a lot smoother. And I'm just taking this brace and pressing up pressing this receiver back against the bottom of the brace so I get a, a good fit under there. Now I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna be a lot more careful. And I wanna do the same to this side, to the tenon receiver side. And just a little bit. And we wanna keep our fit nice and tight. This has got a, had a dent or two in it. Tuning slide is also dent. So this is pushed a little bit this way. We have some damage in the brace, but the gooseneck will pivot and rest back nicely inside here. So I'm gonna take a clamp. And I'm as you can see, the clamp is very loose. I'm just holding it enough to hold it in place. I don't really like to clamp anything tight because it causes stress to the horn. But I can see because of the damage that it has that we have to, we have to exert a little bit of extra force on it. And now I'm gonna take a triangle scraper and I'm gonna come around the edge of the brace, flange, and the body. And what I'm doing here is I am removing the finish in just that area because it will interfere with our soldering. The lacquer will actually prevent the solder from flowing so 
and now we're gonna okay I've got a little bit of a take a burnisher here I've got the foot I guess this is where it broke so we're gonna push this back down we can just lay that to get the to get a really nice fit in there the better the fit of the parts the better your joint is going to look and then we're going to do that same operation of just removing trace bits of lacquer right at the joint. And now we're going to add some flux. Flux is used in soldering to keep heat oxidation off of the metal. As it's heated with a torch, it's going to want to change colors and oxidize. And the solder will not flow. So you have to use this product called Flux to get that to flow. I'm going to use, I'm going to use a Smith Jeweler's Torch. With a little number six tip. There are three things that you do at the solder bench. Fit of the parts, cleanliness of the parts, control the heat. We've done two of the three. Now we're going to come in and control the heat. Our flux is bubbling off. You want to have so much control of your heat that you can put a drop a solder on and then just use it and it'll follow the flame tip. boil off with that flux clean up any extra areas you have to be especially careful when you're working with this lacquer that's 50 or 60 years old you don't want to burn it but you have to get it hot enough for the solder to flow. A lot of times you'll see a little black corrosion spots. It can trick you into thinking that it's actually, that your joint is actually filled, but it won't be. But I can take my fingernail and clean it out. Now I'm going to flip over and do the other side. Gonna add a touch more flux. And at this point I don't it doesn't matter to me if this this little clamp is here or not. I've already got the joint started, I'm not going to let it get hot enough. I'm going to add the rest of my solder. Got a little bit over.
flux is an acid, so you have to neutralize it. For that, I use baking soda and water. After that, I grab a clean, dry solder rag and you wipe up any of your excess called heat and wipe and you want to you want to clean it and wipe everything back down to tinning so you get a rhythm going heat wipe heat wipe and you, just to make sure that you have any kind of res residual solder make sure that you get rid of it heat wipe he white, you get in the rhythm. But you're not heating the joint enough for the solder to flow. You're heating the solder, not, it's kind of counterintuitive a little bit because you're heating the solder, not the joint, but you, I guess in essence you are heating the joint. But not to the point where anything happen. Heat white, heat white. Now here I can see that this was probably soldered before. I didn't notice that drop of solder, but I'm going to go ahead and get that while I'm here. Okay. Then the last things that I like to do is I like to dress the joint. I use a flat scraper and I just like to come right up against where the flange meets the body in any kind of residual stick out or poke out or anything like that. I like to dress all that down because that's the way it would have been done at the factory after they soldered it. It would have been buffed on a machine and then degreased. So all of these flange edges would have been extremely crisp. And so that's what we're going for here as well. So we're going to come in and do this all the way around on all four. And while you're doing this, you can also check to make sure that all of your joint was in fact full and has solder in it. Okay, now we've got just a little bit of tinning left over all around. For that, we're gonna take some Triple E on some cheesecloth. And buff off any of this excess tinning. I go right up against those, right up against the flange. So then I wipe it down. Another clean cloth. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit shinier than our surrounding areas. 
So we want to kind of make this blend in and we may want to brighten these a little bit. So we're going to darken this area just a touch and we're going to brighten this area just a touch just because I want it to look right for the customer. So I've got a lot of times just a cotton rag here will have enough stuff on it that you can just lightly buff around. And see that gives it all the a very similar patina. Now we'll take this and actually use a handheld torch. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just darken darken that area just a touch. It's not really hot, just a small amount of heat, but it's enough to kind of reoxidize. Uh, artificial oxidation, I guess. And that'll kind of blend that in. So now, it's kind of warm. This all, if you look at it as a section, this whole section looks very similar in patina now. And then I'm going to take some Renaissance wax what the Queen of England recommended. No, seriously, a friend of mine from who watches my YouTube channel turned me on to this stuff and said it was used in museums over in Britain. And I got some and I have just fallen in love with it because of exactly this. And this wax will seal that patina up. And that's it. So we didn't lose any lacquer. We didn't burn anything that was already there. And when you look at this area, we've made all of that look like it was it belongs together. So that's how I do a vintage solder joint. This is Wesley signing out.